Our next guest is a New York Times best-selling author with more than 20 books under his belt. And his latest effort, One Night, a sizzling page turner that does not disappoint. And here to discuss his prolific career and the importance of chasing your dreams is author Eric Jerome Dickey. Welcome to the show. Welcome. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Yeah, so we, having. You, you started this, your, your work in uh, engineering. Yeah, How but, do you go from being an engineer yeah. to a best-selling author, New York Times? Well, it's sort of like I reinvented myself. I uh, actually walked away. I walked away from grad school. How long had you? I had been an engineer for like nine and a half years. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it was, uh, it was a leap of faith. And it was, I, I, I remember that moment where it was like I was in grad school and I walked away. To, mm -hmm. I'm going to pursue writing. And didn't have a contract, didn't have a book, but I just went and re-enrolled uh, at UCLA because yeah. I wanted to start at the bottom with the foundation mm -hmm. and uh, understand the craft uh, before I uh, tried to get an agent and tried to uh, do a novel. I mean, I started over with uh, how to um, write short stories, how to write a mystery, how to do this, and just class after class after class. To hear class. you say that, I yeah. wonder, did you approach it like an engineer? Yes, I did. I, I laid <laughs> out my program. I yeah. did, you know, just, just like I did at the University of Memphis. You know, there was a your freshman, sophomore, I, I laid out my program, the classes I wanted to take, and worked my way up uh, to the classes where you had to submit 65, 70 pages to be invited to take the class yeah. to, to continue, yeah. Now, what did your friends and family make of your decision? I didn't so even talk about it. I really? didn't talk about it. I mean, because I think it's one of those things. They were like, you got, like, you got a good profession <clears throat> with benefits, and you're going to leave to be a well, writer? You know, whenever <laughs> you tell someone you're going to do something else, they mm. always give you the side eye, because mm. people, yeah. no matter what you do, they only see you... Uh, is capable of doing one thing. That's true. People put you in a box. Yeah. Well, you know, I used to do stand-up comedy, but at night, a lot of the a lot of cats were comedians, male and female. But during the day, they were engineers. Yes. They were doctors. They had. Many. Lonnie Love, I think, was an engineer. Yes. Or studied engineer, yeah. at least, yeah. for yeah. example. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, so we have the the day job, and then we have the thing that we do in the evenings at night. That's really becomes our passion mm -hmm. that we pursue. That we put a lot of. You have to invest in yourself yeah. more than you want other people to invest in you. Well, uh, Eric, let's talk about that yeah. investment. You weren't an overnight sensation. No, there no, were I some did, difficult I, times. I did the time. You know? <laughs> talk, talk about those difficult yeah. times. What, what was that like? Well, and you know, were you ever worried that you wouldn't make it? I, I think everyone uh, is always worried, mm -hmm. you know, starting out. I mean, you, you're working on your stuff. You're workshopping. You know, you're picking up a novel by Stephen King or Anne Rice or, uh, or anyone. You're reading going like, how do I get from here to, to there? I mean, just, just being published to, uh, not about fame, mm -hmm. but just becoming a working uh, writer, a working author, you know, uh, to get to the point where, you know, food, clothing, shelter. You're not trying to buy a Learjet. No. <laughs> you, know, you, know, you, know, you just, just want to eat. I mean, yeah, Can I, mean, I pay my rent? Well, you yeah. know, and, and um, I think I was on, about on my third book, mm -hmm. uh, Milking My Coffee, and I was, I was, by then I was substitute teaching. I had walked away from engineering, was je just barely making enough to get my rent paid. And uh, when I was at Milking My Coffee, I, I was at a point where it was like, okay, so I can step away from this and do this full time, but you have to do it full time. The only thing that changed was the next morning when I woke up at 6 o'clock, uh -huh. mm -hmm. my office was right there in the same room. That's right. <laughs> so I just got up and, and I kept the same schedule. Like I would get up at 5 or whatever to get, get ready for work. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I would get up at 5, get in front of the computer. Yeah, and that's right. where I would be all day long. And now, on average, you write, what, one or two books a year? Is yes, that true? It, yeah, it depends on the year. I, there was one period where I did three novels in 18 months. My wow. So, yeah, but, but, but the thing is, you work every day. It's not you work every day. It's still a little bit by a little bit. Mm -hmm. uh, you, you, um, a lot of people tend to become self-employed mm -hmm. and go on vacation. Right. Yeah. Being self-employed is about going to work. Yeah. Well, it's not about, of, you, yeah. you go to work and you earn yes, your vacation. That's right. See, a lot of people, want, they, want, they want the fun stuff up front. That's right. I do my fun stuff on the back end. And you know. a lot of your book focuses on the fun stuff. It's oh, yeah. Like a, lot of, a lot of your stories <laughs> yeah. are set in very exotic locales. Yeah, you know, even if I'm in Argentina or the Bahamas <laughs> or uh, London, yeah. Belgium, I'm there working. Mm -hmm. Well, here's the thing. I know people see and they see, you know, you see these exotic places. Well, when I land in Argentina, I'm going to be there for three months. But I have 90 days to do a lot of work. Wow. So, you know what I mean? So I'm up every day. I'm up at night. Uh, I, I have some fun in between. But every day is 
somehow I'm trying to get to the end of the project. Again, I have 90 days. That's not a lot of time. No. Yeah. That means you're working every day. You're working through exhaustion, and you rest after you get that first yeah. draft in. You Take know? us back to the first advance check. Speaking of fun, oh, wow. what, what did you do with it? Oh, gosh, man. Uh, let's see. My first advance check, I owed uh, my buddy, Audrey Cooper. He, <laughs> I owed him for, he had paid my rent for two months. Wow. I owed my mechanic for fixing my... 240 ZX that broke down all the time. <laughs> I love it. No, it's, it's, this guy named Dan in LA, and it's so funny is because I, I, I went in and uh, I didn't have the money to get my car fixed. Yeah. And he said, Oh, Eric, don't worry about it. Just leave your car, just, just take the car, and when you get the money, pay me. And it's funny because it, and I, and I ran into him. I was out once at a matinee at a movie, and I yeah. felt so bad because you know, I spent two bucks for a matinee. Mm -hmm. I said, No, Dan, I'm, really, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get your money. Eric, you're a good guy. I know you're going to get the money. And then and, and as soon as I got my check, I paid everyone that I owed. I wasn't the one who got the money and vanished. My check came, and it was like phone calls Hey, man, I got your money. I'm bringing it to you. It's not you come get it. Wow. <laughs> right. I'm bringing it to wherever oh, you are. I'm coming. I'm bringing you your money. Oh. Uh, so for me, I'm, I'm a guy, I can sleep with my garage door open and my car inside mm -hmm. because nothing's going to be repossessed. The bills are paid. And, and That's my, a good feeling. <clears throat> well, and my thing is always this. It's always this is take care of that stuff first. Yes. And then what you have left, that's what you plan your fun on. Wow. I've seen people plan their fun on the stuff up front. Absolutely. And then the tax man comes and takes everything away. Yeah, mm -hmm. because it's like, well, the money's gone. Well, you had the money. Yeah. yeah. But you, you know, put you it played away. instead yeah. of working. I mean, so, I mean, regardless of what your responsibilities that you take care of that stuff first. Well, let's talk about mm -hmm. one night. Let's take care of that first. Okay. All right. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Happens over the course of 12 hours. Yeah, 12 Tell hours. us more. Well, it's like I, uh, I wanted to create two characters who had nothing in common. Mm -hmm. uh, she's from one part of L.A., he's from another part. Uh, he, uh, he's rich, she's not. Mm -hmm. uh, and at that moment, something has happened in his life, and at that point, she's trying to get control of her life. Okay. So they meet, and it's like this. But mm -hmm. over the course of 12 hours, uh, there's conversation. Mm -hmm. uh, they become friends. Mm -hmm. uh, they become lovers. Yeah. It's, it's like they have an entire relationship, so including the breakup. So this to this. To this. <laughs> and, also, and, also, and also, you want the, uh, the jealousy, the insecurity, mm -hmm. the breakup, yes. the uh, are they going to get back together? Mm -hmm. uh, what's going to happen to their lives? After, after the story, we've you know? we've seen many steamy books the like adapted into film. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. So what's going on? Are you thinking that you might adapt any of your oh, gosh, projects I would love, into? I would love movies? to see them all adapt. I would love for them to give me my own channel, the EJD channel, and let's, <laughs> let's do them all. Yeah, I. Uh, there have been a couple of options here and there. Yeah. Okay. Uh, nothing has. Uh, it's, we've had the engagement, but there has never been a marriage. Yes. Uh, okay. We just put it that way. Uh, and but you know it's. It, when it, it'll happen when it's when it's supposed to happen. Do you have any you know? particular title that you'd like to see become a film first? Oh gosh, um, that's a good question. Friends and lovers, probably. I mean, I oh, probably, yeah. probably will go way back to to then uh, because I love those characters. You see, I we say this for Hollywood, just yeah, in case. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I just I love those characters. I love the story. I love the uh, the plots, the subplots. Yeah. I love the way that African Americans are represented on the page in that in that in that tale. Post college. Uh, still trying to, you know, it's like you go to college and you, you write out that thing you put in the refrigerator, how you, you expect your life to go. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Then you get into the real world right. and it just doesn't go that yeah, way. That's you that's can it. plan, but it just doesn't go that way. You know? And it's so funny, that's why I like uh, jumping from that to uh, being Mary Jane. Yeah. Yes. I can see that she's mapped it out yeah. mm -hmm. and the difficulty and like I've done everything that I'm supposed to do. Why can't I close this gap between this and the rest of what I want in my life, you know? Yeah. It's relatable, I think, to us all. Yeah, that yeah, but, 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 that, but that's, that's the way life is. Yeah. I mean, right. as I'm writing characters, I give them all challenges, regardless of the genre. If it's uh, romance, uh, like One Night, or if yeah. it's like a wanted woman, it, I, I put the challenges in there because, um, you know, life just doesn't yeah. always go. Life, uh, life yeah. throws you a curveball. You know, here's the thing is because, like the the uh, the male character in One Night, mm -hmm. you look at him and you think that everything in his life has to be perfect. He's dressed this way. He's um, he drives this particular type of car. He's educated, but his stuff is just as is falling apart, mm -hmm. just like everyone else's. You know. Well, Eric Jerome Dickey, 
we cannot Absolutely. wait to read even more oh, of your work. You. I know you. this thank is you. just the beginning. I Believe know. it or yes. not, this yes. is just the beginning. You're going to have your own channel, EJD. Absolutely. EJD channel, EJD right? channel. <laughs> that's it, right. But as long as you're watching Arise first, that's and then right. That's EJD, right. it's But no, okay. no, I will be part of the BET family. I like Thank you very much. Awesome. Booyah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you for watching Arise Entertainment 360. We'll be right back. <laughs>